In today's video, we're going to talk about something called cost volume profit analysis, and more specifically, how we can use CVP analysis to calculate something we're going to call the break even point, which is basically the point where a business is not losing money, it's not making money, it's just breaking even. So I think this is best illustrated using an example. So let's pretend that you decide you want to start a, res a restaurant. You're going to sell sub sandwiches. So you've got a little sub shop here. Now we need to know what's the price before we can figure out how much it's going to take to, to break even. We need to know how much you're going to sell each sub for. So let's say you just do some research, you figure okay I can get five dollars for each sandwich. So we just input that. Now we need to know what's the cost for each sandwich and that's going to be the variable cost. Now with this cost here what I'm talking about is the cost to specifically make a sandwich. The, the bread, all, all the input, the pickles, the lettuce, whatever it is that you put. Every time you decide to make a sandwich you're going to incur some specific costs and those are going to be the variable costs because they vary with the number of sandwiches you make. So let's say that that's three dollars. Now what this is going to yield, we're going to take the difference here. We're going to subtract from the price these variable costs and that spread is something that we're going to call the contribution margin. Now contribution margin might might sound a little complex. Let's just just relax for a moment while I explain. So first of all it's it's two dollars and all this by the way is on a per unit basis per unit. So this is for each sandwich is five dollars. Each sandwich we're going to incur three dollars of cost and each time we've got a spread of two dollars. So the first question is, well, contribution toward what? Well, we've neglected an important cost here, uh, and that cost is going to be something we call our fixed costs. Okay. So now, what wh what are fixed costs, and how they differ, or how do they differ from variable costs? Well, we're going to have things like rent, and then we, we might have some insurance for our building or for our equipment, and and, and so. It's, it's so forth. I'm not going to name them all here, but they're basically costs that do not change. They're fixed regardless of how many sub sandwiches we sell. So if we sell, uh, let's say, 10,000 subs or 1,000 subs, our rent will still be the same. However, the amount of lettuce that we use will be different because that's a function of how many subs we actually make. But the rent is completely fixed with respect to how many subs we make. The insurance is fixed. So those things, th they don't vary based on how many subs. So let's take, let me change, change colors here again. Let's go with purple. So now let's, let's actually go and uh, we've, we've got a nice little formula here for how we can say we're going to break even. So let me just put here. So there's a couple ways we can think about this break even point. And one way is to think about it in terms of units. Now by units here, what I mean is the number of sub sandwiches that we sell. So is it going to take 500 sub sandwiches that we have to sell before we break even or 5,000? There's, there's a convenient formula. And that formula is going to be fixed costs, which I'm just going to abbreviate as FC here. Those are our fixed costs from, from down here. Oh, I forget to put a number. Let, let's put a number to those fixed costs. So let's say that those fixed costs are $20,000. That's what it costs for your rent and everything. So, now these fixed costs, this $20,000, we're going to divide that by the contribution margin per unit. So for each sub, every time we sell one for $5, we net out first this, this $3 for pickles and bread, and that leaves us with that, that $2 extra per sub. So that spread is going to be contributed toward the remaining fixed costs. Okay, so that's why we've got that here. And then this is going to be, we'll just put the, now we're just copying numbers here. There's nothing. So we got the $20,000 fixed costs divided by this $2 here. And that's going to yield 10,000. 10,000 units, and which is the same as you know, 10,000 subs. So I'll just put that there. So basically, this is saying 
that if we don't want to lose money, if we want to at least break even, we have to sell at least 10,000 sandwiches at this price, assuming this variable cost per unit. So, but there's another way to think about the break-even point. So, instead of thinking about the break-even point in terms of the number of subs that we have to sell, we could also think of it in terms of the actual sales dollars that, that we would have to ring up on the register before we would break even. So, it's just, the, the formula is very simple here. So, now, again, it's, it's fixed cost, just like before, but... Now we're going to, have to divide by something called the contribution margin ratio. Okay. Now this ratio, let me just change colors here. Uh, it, it's it's pretty simple to calculate. We're going to take, we're basically trying to figure out for every dollar that we sell, every time we sell, have a dollar in sales, how much of that dollar goes toward these fixed costs. So we're going to take the two and divide it by the five. So our contribution margin ratio, there we go, well, this is, that's 0.4. So 40 cents of every dollar can be contributed toward our fixed costs. So let me change back to purple. Okay, so we've got 20,000, again, same fixed costs as, as before. But now we're going to divide it by this 0.4 the contribution margin ratio okay and that's going to yield a total of fifty thousand dollars in sales so if we ring up fifty thousand dollars in sales on our register assuming that we sold each sub for this this price and then we had this variable cost that's going to allow us to break even or essentially in other words cover these fixed costs 